It's Monday. It's puck time. My favorite show. Uh, I love talking hockey. We got Alex B. Smith with us. You can find him every day at sportsmemo.com. I'm the Prez. You can find me at wagertalk.com. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Super Bowl at all. Uh, the Fair most enough. interesting part of the Super Bowl was watching the clock move. Um, <laughs> Alex, I told everybody I had a five-unit play, my highest-rated play, uh, up at Wager Talk on Friday in hockey. Mm-hmm. I told everyone it was probably the play I liked the most all season long. Uh, it was on the over in the Washington Calgary game, uh, and it cashed. Thank you to everybody who joined me. We gave out a great promo, uh, and uh, it was an easy winner. Everybody cashed their tickets. Tonight, I got another great play, a four-star total. It's up at wagertalk.com. What's going on with you, big man? Ah, not much. Just trying to bounce back from uh, what was a, a rough weekend. Had some losers in hockey, unfortunately. And then, like you said, yesterday the Super Bowl was just just atrocious on all fronts. But you know, it's a new week. Uh, we're just moving along. You know, now football's out of the way. We've got hockey uh, clear on our horizon for the next couple of months, and it should be some fun action. Hope we can cash some tickets starting tonight. Okay, brother. We got four games tonight. I'm actually going to the Leaf game. Oh, uh, so nice. let let's start with them, dude. I mean, look, you know, the Leafs lost to Detroit, uh, which was pretty shocking, uh, but they bounced back beautifully Saturday night, down 2 nothing against the Penguins and won the game 3-2. You know, the Leafs here are minus 270. The over and under is 6. And the thing about it is Anaheim is an absolutely terrible team. Uh, They've lost their last three games. They've lost... Uh, eight of their last 10. But Alex, they got thrashed against Winnipeg, 9-3. I would love to bet the Leafs here, minus one and a half, especially considering I'm going to the game and I'm cheering for the Leafs. But man, like this Anaheim team, if they have any desire to even play hockey in the NHL, if they have any balls, uh, if they are any type of men, uh, this is not the spot to be playing against them. They got annihilated, and they've got to be pretty pissed off. Where are you going in this game? Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. I mean, you know, coming off the All-Star break, we've seen a lot of teams, you know, have some energy, finally get that rest, get things in rhythm. Clearly was not the case for the Ducks. They lost 9-3 to Winnipeg. Uh, at the end of the first period, it was 6 nothing. I mean, that game pretty much was done in the first 10 minutes of action. Uh, and now they have to take on a Toronto team they haven't played well against for uh, many years now. 3-11 and in the last 14 meetings with the Leafs. Like you mentioned, they've 2-8 uh, and eight on the, the road the last 10 games. They've lost 15 of their last 17 overall. Uh, and Ryan Kessler is probable for tonight. I don't see where on earth, uh, you know, they get the, the, the energy – to keep up with the Toronto team that now is, you know, like I said, lost a couple of, of games where they should have won. Uh, like I said Detroit and even going back where they lost to, to Arizona. They've got to beat uh, a bad team here in Anaheim and they got to beat them decisively. So uh, I think, you know, there's not a whole lot of value in it, but I would look at maybe laying the goal and a half here too. I could see this being, I don't think it's going to be nine, three, but I could see where Anaheim might start off with some energy early, but uh, if Toronto can match that or top that, they should be able to take over and blow this team out. Yeah, and and I'm with you. And, and, you know, we've spoken about this all year with, the you know, the Anaheim and San Jose and the Kings, just such slow-moving teams, just match up really badly against the speed in, of Winnipeg or of Tampa Bay, the Knights, and Toronto. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is a, a tough spot for Anaheim to bounce back from not only a 9-3 loss at Winnipeg, but at home against St. Louis, they lost 5-1. They yep. couldn't put up a goal against the New York Islanders. Uh, yeah, I mean, Anaheim is in a complete free-for-all. Uh, I, I am not going to be betting this game, but I do lean on the Leafs minus one and a half points. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Kings. Uh, we just mentioned how slow they are. Well, they're yep. playing another pretty slow team in the Rangers, Uh, 72% of the general public are on the Rangers tonight. Uh, They're minus 135, give or take, and the over-under is five and a half. I mean, the Kings are zigzagging their last six games. They beat St. Louis 4-3 at home and lost to the New York Islanders uh, 4-2, but they were right in that. It was 2-2 with like a minute and a half to go in that game. You know, the Rangers are, are, are putting together... 
Well, they've won four of the last six. They did lose 3-2 to Tampa Bay, uh, but that's uh, nothing to sneeze at. Uh, I think the Rangers are going to be a, a buy team for me moving forward. Uh, I like the under in this game, Alex, um, as well. Uh, the Rangers are, are dead even, 22 and 22 on the season. The Kings seven games below 500 and one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, what are you going to do in this game? If I looked at anything, I would be looking at the Rangers and regulation here. And here's the answer. Interesting thing. We talked about these two teams being slow, but one of the plus uh, advantages with the Rangers and even a team like San Jose is that their shot selection is way better. So when they do get in the offensive zone, they know how to set up. They move the puck well. They're not careless with the puck. Uh, and that's the difference between the, with a team like LA or a team like Anaheim where they're not only are they slow, but their entry is not as strong. Uh, they don't make as, as clean and sharp of passes. So that's where the, the Rangers have a, a distinct advantage here. And you, you look at the under. I would look at the under naturally with these two teams. But for some reason, the last 10 meetings between these two, seen the over go 7-2-1. and one. So that's a little bit of uh, something to kind of to look at. But I think the Rangers are going to be the, the better offensive team here. And I think that trend is something that we can kind of put away. I think the under would be uh, a live play here as well. Uh, uh, we're, we're on the same page. Alex, let's talk about this Philadelphia Flyer team. Jesus, yeah. man. They're on a seven-game win streak, including beating Boston in Boston, beating Montreal in Montreal, beating Winnipeg at home, which is one of the best teams in the league. They're putting up point, the goals. They're also keeping teams uh, off the scoreboard. They're a home favorite at minus 164. The over and under is six. But they are playing a Vancouver team who just beat Colorado in Colorado and have now taken the last position uh, in the playoffs. I, I think this Vancouver team has got to feel really good about themselves right now. They're on a three out of four win streak. Um, I am not laying such chalk with Philadelphia. And I can actually see this game going to overtime. I like under the total of six. Well, if you like it overtime, there's, there's a, a play for that. You could play that uh, three-way regulation draw, uh, which I'm seeing now is around 285, 290. I like Vancouver here. I actually went and played this game uh, right before we went on air, about 20 minutes before we went on air. Uh, I got it at plus 140. Uh, and there's some 145s around as well. I think this Philadelphia team, yeah, a seven-game win streak, it's a nice run for them, but it's a bit of fool's gold. If you look at some of the goaltenders they beat, they've been beating backups. Alexander Georgiev in that Ranger game. Uh, when they won against Winnipeg, it was Laurent Brassois in that. Antti Niemi was in net for, for uh, Montreal. So they're, they're not getting uh, – they weren't beating some of the elite goalies they had in the last couple of games, but a lot of those wins came against backups. And here they're going to play uh, against Jacob Markstrom, who is the starter for Vancouver, who has been playing uh, some pretty well – pretty decent in hockey as of late. Vancouver winning four of their last six games, and I mentioned uh, on the Sports Memo podcast last Tuesday, they're one of my teams that I think could really make a run and possibly could sneak in. They are a team with nothing to lose. I mean, they're they're still planning for the future. They're not going to go and make some kind of crazy, rash, you know, irrational trade. These young guys will feed off of this energy of making a playoff run, and we should see them. Uh, I think they'll be able to possibly sneak in and get a wild card spot, but I like them tonight here at plus 140, plus 145. He's Alex B. Smith. You find him at sportsmemo.com. I'm the prez, wagertalk.com. And yeah, dude, if I'm going to pick a side on this game, I'm right with you 100%. I think Vancouver is a super live dog. Um, I, 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 there's just no chance I'm laying such chalk with Philadelphia. Uh, let's, there's only four games on the card today. Let's talk about the final one. Uh, we've got Dallas uh, hosting Arizona. Dallas is 27 and 21 on the season. They are 17 and eight at home. Arizona dead even Alex at 23-23. They have a losing road record at nine and 12. Uh, look, Arizona's lost their last two games, both on the road. Uh, this is their fifth road game in a row, and they're going up against a fiery Dallas team who has won their last four games and have let in 1-1-0 one, one, and two goals, and some of them against scoring teams. I mean, beating Nashville on the road 3-1, beating Minnesota 3-1, Buffalo can put the puck in the net 1-0, and they kept Winnipeg down to two. Uh, the over and under here is five and a half in this game. I can't touch the total because Arizona is an over team and Dallas is playing to the under, but I do like the stars in regulation. What do you think? 
Yeah, I agree with you with the stars and, and regulation. You can find it minus a dollar fifteen or a dollar twenty. Said so this is a Dallas team looking to be a, getting a little sharper. I wouldn't say they're they're going to you know turn into one of the elite teams in the West, obviously, but they're they're doing what they need to do. They're beating, uh, playing tough with good teams and beating bad teams. Teams that's supposed to take care of, and that's a, that's where Arizona fits in. They're uh, a bad team that might be without their best player uh, tonight, Oliver Ekman Larson. Uh, so that's going to be not only just a, a huge blow to them defensively, but also offensively as well, the way he contributes moving the puck around. Uh, the one thing I would be looking at here would be the first period under. That has uh, been the mantra for the Dallas Stars all year. Uh, we've seen well over 75% of their games go under in that first period. So I can see this, once again, kind of if they can dictate the pace they want to to win this game, then they're going to start off slow, be methodical, uh, and, and move the puck at their own pace, which would lean to the first period under. Alex, we got a big slate of games on tomorrow. It's a 12-pack for Tuesday, uh, including some back-to-backs. Vancouver's in Washington. Um, Really great card tomorrow. Anaheim's on the road playing Montreal. Nashville's playing Arizona in a back-to-back. Winnipeg's hosting San Jose. Um, Super excited about tomorrow. We will talk to you and Andrew. Best of luck tonight, my friend. Uh, be well, and I uh, hope you cash some tickets. All right, sounds good. Take it easy, Press. See you tomorrow.